Hello, algebra and honors algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to continue our exploration of probability. Um, there's going to be two videos tonight. In this first one will deal with permutations and combinations. And the most important thing to remember with a permutation or a combination, in a permutation, the order, order matters. Okay, now I know some of you are just going to sit here and go, oh, I got this, this is easy, but you're not going to do what I show you to do, and you're going to get the answers wrong. Okay, please make sure you're doing what I show you to do. Follow the steps. Okay, no offense. You're not that smart to just sit there and go, oh, I got this. Okay, you have to follow the steps. Okay, now you may think you know what a combination is, but you don't. Because you've been calling your locker a locker combination for years, and you've been calling it the wrong thing. But it's actually a locker permutation. Why? Because the order matters. Think about it. Let's pretend your com was 1, 2, 3. If I try to break into your locker and I input the numbers 3, 1, 2, do I get into your locker? No, absolutely not. So you see, your locker is a locker permutation because they changed the order and I got a different result. I didn't get in your locker, did I? So I'm going to put here uh, the order matters for, say, opening a locker. Opening a locker. Okay, let's look at some other examples and see if we can figure out if they're a perm or a combo. Okay, 10 runners in a race. In how many different ways can they finish in first, second, and third place? Let's pretend it's the Olympics and let's pretend the first place gets a gold medal, the second place gets a silver medal, and the third place gets a bronze. Okay, well here's how you decide if the order matters or not. You write down an outcome. Let's say Bob was in first, Tom was in second, and Sue was in third. So we got first, second, third. So Bob got the gold medal, right? But if I change the order and get Tom, Sue, then Bob, is that the same thing? No, of course it's not the same thing. So you see the order does matter. In this case, the blue case, Bob's getting the gold medal. In this case, Bob's getting the bronze medal. So this is a permutation. And we're going to come back and see how to solve these in a minute. But I'm telling you, this is the part that many of you won't do. You'll just go, oh, I know this, and you'll get it wrong. Please write down an outcome and then switch it to see if it's a perm or a combo. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in track meets or in the Olympics, they often have too many athletes for one event. And so they run heats, okay? They might have 20 runners in a race, and the top four runners get to advance to the next race. They don't get anything special other than they get to advance. Well, let's see here. Let's pick an outcome. Let's say Sally came in first, and uh, Shelly came in second. And Dick came in third. And uh, let's see here, I'm making this too hard. Uh, let's do Ailita came in fourth. Okay. Now, all four of these runners get to go on to the next race, right? Let's change the order. And let's go Shelly, and then Ailita, and then Sally, and then finally Dick. Okay, when I change the order, did I get the same result? Well, let's see who goes on to the next race over here. Shelly, Sally, Dick, and Ailita. Who goes over here? Shelly, Ailita, Sally, Dick. It's the same four runners. This is a combination. A combination. Okay, this is a combination. Why? Because the order does not matter. All right. Mrs. Sturm assigns you three books to read over the summer. You may choose the three books from a list of 12. In how many different ways can you choose three books? Well, tell me what three books you picked. Maybe you picked Tears of a Tiger. Okay. Maybe you picked Ender's Game, one of my favorite books of all time. Ender's Game. And then maybe you picked uh, The Wizard... 
of Oz. Okay. Now, your friend says, I don't know. I think I'm going to pick Ender's Game. The Wizard of Oz. And Tears of a Tiger. At the end of summer, have you read the same three books? Sure you have. So therefore, the order does not matter. This is a combination. Absolutely. And I'll show you how to calculate them in a minute. Hey, I got one more for you. Got one more for you. Oh, this one I already told you was a permutation, so I'm going to do one more. Right? Okay. Let's do one more. Let's say how many different ways can the letters in the word star be rearranged? Okay, now you have to write down an outcome. For example, hey, mommy, sing me twinkle, twinkle, little star. Okay, and then change the order. Hey, mommy, sing me twinkle, twinkle, little rats. Is it the same thing? Of course not. The order matters. We get a completely different word if we take change the order. Now, by the way, when we're rearranging, they don't have to make real, real words like we could have used straw, okay, or arts, but they don't have to make real words. These are real words, but these aren't. This one isn't. Uh, neither is this, uh, okay, but it still counts as one of the rearrangings. So this is a permutation, okay? The order matters. Now we're going to go back and learn how to calculate the permutations, and then I'll show you how to calculate the combinations. I lost my scroll bar. There we go. All right. First of all, we got 10 runners in a race. How many different ways can you finish in the top three spots? What do I care about in this? I care about three places. So I make three spaces. At the start of the race, how many runners could finish in first? Well, 10. How many runners could finish in second? Well, it's not 10 again. It's only nine because there has to be somebody in first. And then, for third, it would be eight. Now, if you paid attention yesterday to the fundamental counting principle, you know that you should multiply those three numbers together, and you will get 720 different ways. Okay? Two of the ways are listed here, but there's 718 other ways. Now, I'm not going to do the combination yet. I'm just going to go through and do the permutations. Okay, so that's a combination. All right, we've got our locker. How many numbers do you need for your quote-unquote com? It's really a perm. Okay, well, I need three. Okay. How many choices do you have for the first number? Well, there's 50. 0 to 49 would be 50 numbers, right? 1 to 49 would be 49. And then there's one more for 50. Okay. Choice two, second one, can you have a com that's like two, two, two? Sure you can. So therefore, there are 50 more choices. And finally, for the third one, there are another 50 choices. Fundamental counting principle tells me to multiply these together. So five times five times five is 125, and three zeros. There are 125,000 different locker permutations. So in other words, you could have a middle school with 125,000 different students, and each one, none of them, would have to have a duplicate permutation to open their locker. All right, one more problem here. Star problem. Okay. How many things am I rearranging? Well, I'm rearranging four letters, so I need four spaces. One, two, three, four. Now, you go to pick the first letter of the new quote-unquote word, because it doesn't have to be a real word. Okay, how many choices do you have? Well, you have S, T, A, and R. There's four choices. Once you've picked a letter, now, let's say I take the T, now there's only three choices left. 
maybe I take the R, and then there's only two choices, I take the A, and now I'm down to one choice. What do I do with these? I multiply them. The fundamental counting principle tells me to. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. There are 24 different rearrangements of the word star, of the four letters in the word star, including the word star. 24 different ways to rearrange those letters. Pretty simple stuff. And I don't know about you, when I figure this out, I feel pretty darn smart. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta wet my vocal cords here. All right, good deal. So let's go back and see how to do the combinations. Now the combinations are really, really difficult. They start off easy, and then man, they get really hard. The first thing I'm gonna do is say, how many things do I care about? Just like I did in the permutation. Well, I care about the top four places. So I'm gonna make one, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna put a division bar in. Why am I gonna put a division bar in? Because I don't wanna count the blue list and the red list as two separate things. Because in reality, it doesn't matter. They're the same thing. Now, if I put four spaces in the numerator, I'm gonna put four spaces in the denominator. Now the numerator starts off just like a permutation. Okay, so how many different runners could finish in the top in first place? Will there be, uh, sorry, there would be 20, right? Because there's 20 runners in this race. See, 20 runners in the race, at the start of the race, 20 could finish in first place. Then there would be 19, and then 18, and then 17. Now, please pay attention. This is extremely difficult, okay? You see this space right here? You're going to start with a 1. And then you're going to count until you run out of spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there you go. Your combination is set up. Now, if you're like Mr. Lawrence and you like to work smart and not hard, you're going to simplify first and then multiply. And a cool thing is about the simplifying, your denominator will all turn to 1. So I'm going to go 4 goes into 20 five times. 3 goes into 18 six times. 2 doesn't go into 5 evenly, doesn't go into 19, goes into 6 evenly three times. And 1 is already a 1. These had all turned to 1s. My denominator, when I multiply, is 1. Now all I have to do is multiply 5 times 19 times 3 times 17, and I will have the correct answer. Pardon me, I'm reaching for a calculator. I don't have a calculator installed on this. I don't know that I can. Maybe I can find an app for one. But anyway, so I'm going to go 5 times 19 times 3 times 17, and there are 4,845 different ways for those 20 runners to finish in the top four places. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. All right, let's try the Mrs. Sturm problem. We had three books to read from a list of 12. Well, how many things am I choosing? How many things do I care about? I care about three. So I'm going to put three in, three spaces. Now, how many choices do I have for my first book? Well, how many are in the list? Twelve. Once, oh, wait, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Because this is a combination, I need a fraction bar. Oh my goodness, what the heck was that? All right, I need a fraction bar. And then if I made three spaces in the numerator, I'm going to put three spaces in the denominator. Okay, now, if there were twelve books on the list, I have 12 choices. Once I've picked and read a book, now I have 11 choices and then I'm down to 10. Here comes the hard part. Can you handle it? You put a 1 here and you count until you run out of spaces. Now, again, please, please, please simplify first. Don't simplify second. Simplifying first, 3 will go into 12 four times. 2 can go into 4 two times. I could have done it to the 10. 
I wanted to keep the 10 for my multiplication. I can't do it to the 4 and the 10. I have to pick one. And the 1's already a 1. So my denominator turns into a 1. My numerator is 2 times 11, or 22, times 10, 220. So there are 220 different ways to choose three books from that list. All right. Tell you what, let's do one more, and then we'll call it quits. Let's say you're going to order a pizza, okay, and you're going to choose five toppings from a list of 25, okay, and uh, you're not going to pick like double pepperoni. Okay, you're going to pick five toppings. Well, is this a perm or a combo? Well, let's see. Let's say your pepperoni is going to have, your pizza is going to have pepperoni, sausage, onion, mushroom, and ham. Okay. Well, somebody else ordered a ham, sausage, onion, mushroom, pepperoni pizza. Are those pizzas different? No, they're exactly the same. It doesn't matter that they're put on in different order. So here the order does not matter. This is a combination. Combination. All right. So let's uh, let's figure it out. How many things am I choosing? Five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And then I need five more spaces in my denominator. One, two, three, four, five. All right, the numerator. How many toppings do I have to choose from? Well, I have 25. After I pick one, there's only 24 left. Then there's 23. And then there's 22. And then there's 21. Again, here comes the hard part. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so I'm going to uh, simplify as much as possible. Five is going to go into 25 five times. Four goes into 24 six times. Three goes into 21 seven times. Two goes into 22 11 times. Now all I have to do is multiply five times six times 23 times 11, times 7, 5, times 6, times 23, times 11, times 7, and I get 53,130 different pizzas you could make. That's pretty amazing. All right, that's going to be it for this video. There is going to be another video posted. Um, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.